Jimmy Kimmel. Finally, well, thank you. Well, that's very nice. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Wow, where did all these people come from? Well, that's very nice. I appreciate it. You know. Um, for those of you watching at home, if it sounds different, it's because after more than, um, what, 15 months at home and then in a mostly empty studio, we finally have a real audience. It's almost like a real show for a change. We're not fully full yet. We're allowed to let 89 people in. How they arrived at that number, I have no idea, but uh, everyone is masked, vaccinated, just to be extra safe. We shaved everyone from head to toe. <laughs> Most of you probably haven't been to uh, an event of any kind in, in a while. Uh, you've been watching on TV. J just a couple of reminders. Number one, you can't mute me. And number two, it's rude to go to sleep during the show, OK? <laughs> Thanks for understanding. It's been a long time. In fact, we looked it up. The last joke I told in front of a full audience was about Tulsi Gabbard. Do you remember her? <laughs> me neither. I, I, the joke was. Um, <laughs> The joke was, Tulsi Gabbard is still in the running for president in the same way the movie Cats is still in the running for Academy Award. <laughs> That's about how well it went over the first time, too, but... <laughs> this is exciting. I mean, how many of you are on vacation right now visiting us from, uh... Oh, wait, so now, uh, let's talk to these two people right... You know, up one. Yeah, right there. Now, you guys, you are not on vacation? No, we just feel... We feel like we're on vacation. <laughs> but we're not on vacation. You live here in L.A.? Yes. And yet you're wearing the two most touristy shirts. <laughs> I mean, you must be very proud of living here. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, well. Did you decide, like, hey, we might be on TV tonight. Let's get our, our best stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> you have to represent. <laughs> <laughs> did you buy this at the souvenir shop, or what's going on? You guessed it right. You got it. I got it right, yeah. It right. What do you do for work? We have a bit of market research business, so we just... The two of you have it together? Yes, yes. Oh, you work together? You're married? Yes. How's that going? Pretty good. It's like a roller coaster, but it always goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes going you, up all the time. <laughs> sometimes you throw up, other times you're screaming, right? Yeah. Love, love, love. And do you have children? Yes. You, you have one Did one. you have a good Father's Day? Was there a Father's Day plan yesterday? It was uh, sporadic love happening all day. <laughs> I'm going to translate that uh, from dad into English. That means nothing happened. <laughs> right? They did nothing for you? Yeah. Sporadic love. That's yeah. right. You know, we're so appreciative of you guys and everyone coming that on the way out tonight, everyone in this audience is going to get a pair of tube socks and a boiled egg. So there you go. <laughs> And also our way of saying, hey, it's not Ellen, OK? <laughs> well, I hope you remembered it was Father's Day yesterday. Uh, Father's Day has to be the biggest time of the year for nail clippers. Nail clippers and nose hair trimmers. Guillermo, how was your Father's Day? It was great, Jimmy. We had a barbecue, made margaritas. You did? Who made the margaritas? Who did the barbecuing? My wife and my mother-in-law. They did it all? Yes, it's Father's Day. Did you get the chance to make sweet love as you were predicting you would? Of course, Jimmy, yes. Why are you pointing? Who are you pointing at? To the guy over there that he made sweet love to his wife, too. No, no, he, he said sporadic love. Oh, sporadic. Oh, yeah. OK, I couldn't hear that, yeah. It's different. No, I did make sweet you love. You did? Oh, congratulations. Yeah. That's Thank great. You. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> what did Benji get for you? What did your son get? Oh, he got me a pair of shoes. A pair of shoes? Yes. What kind of shoes? A tennis shoes, you know, like... Oh, really? Yeah. For... He picked them out? Well, my wife did. Oh, okay. All right. Well, That's they went together, good. you know. You know, a lot of people got shorts on. A lot of dads got shorts. Are you laughing because you got shorts? No, I didn't. Oh, but I got shorts, <laughs> and my cousin Sal got shorts. Um, I guess because this is that magical time of the year when every dad switches out those unfashionable cargo pants for a pair of unfashionable cargo shorts. The room for plenty of room for keys, wallet, uh, two Steely Dan CDs, <laughs> jumper cables, whatever. There's even room for another pair of cargo shorts, just in case in there. Yesterday, our um, former president, Donald Donald Trump, shared a Father's Day holiday wish. He wrote, Happy Father's Day to all, including the radical left, rhinos, and other losers of the world. Oh, poor Eric. That's not nice to say on Father's Day. But anyway, hopefully, eventually, everyone will come together 
And by come together, he means accept me as your one true God. I feel like <laughs> his heart's not even in these anymore. I think Melania might be putting Lexapro in his diet coke or something. <laughs> But we're learning more about just how uh, poorly our Kentucky Fried Commander-in-Chief mismanaged the pandemic thanks to a forthcoming book that details the chaos and infighting that plagued Team Trump's response to the coronavirus. This book was written by reporters from The Washington Post who say that at the beginning of the pandemic, Trump suggested sending Americans who had been infected with COVID while they were traveling overseas to Guantanamo Bay. And you know he said he wants to send them to Geronimo Bay or something like that. You know he didn't. He asked his aides, don't we have an island that we own? We could put people there. Of course, the reality TV star wanted to send them to an island. He probably sent a camera crew, too, and call it Survirus or something. But <laughs> this is another good McNugget from the book. Trump, uh, they say he was very upset about COVID testing because he believed a positive test would look bad and hurt his chances of re-election. He had a call with Alex Azar, who was his Secretary of Health and Human Services, and he demanded to know what idiot decided to make the federal government do testing, and Alex Azar was like, uh, do you mean Jared? <laughs> it was Jared. <laughs> Poor Jared. According to the book, at one point, when Jared found out that the masks the government ordered wouldn't be ready until June, he got so mad, he yelled at a, a top official. He said, you effing moron, we'll all be dead by June. And, and he threw a pen at the wall, which I imagine went like this. I don't know, something like that. I got a whole box of these Sharpies if you don't shape up. In New York City, things are opening up to the point where people are now taking flight. This is a... Guy flew over Times Square on a hoverboard, Green Goblin style, in New York. The pigeons were like, who is that? What? I miss the old New York where somebody would have figured out how to pull them off that thing and steal it. Take it from them, get on it, and pee from it. That's what... <laughs> in other more traditional flying news, airlines are talking about jacking up the fees for overweight baggage to make up for all the weight passengers have gained during lockdown. <laughs> An American Airlines spokesperson says its average, average passenger weight is up eight pounds since spring of last year. It went up from 179 pounds per person to 187. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe don't put your planes at the end of Cinnabon Alley then. How is this our fault? <laughs> the Olympics are still happening next month in Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo residents will be allowed to go to the games, but they will not be allowed to cheer and they have to go straight home after. Whoever came up with these rules should win the gold medal for buzzkill, because can you imagine going to a live sporting event with no cheering allowed? It's like a Detroit Lions game. <laughs> the eight-time Olympic gold medal winning sprinter Usain Bolt and his girlfriend welcomed, publicly welcomed twin baby boys yesterday. They, uh, they were delivered in a world record 9.58 seconds. <laughs> and the Bolts posted this family photo to Instagram now, that's the older kid is their daughter, Olympia Lightning Bolt, and the new twins are named Thunderbolt and St. Leo Bolt. <laughs> is Thunderbolt even a thing? I mean, I know there's a lightning, but there, there are no Thunderbolts. It's... <laughs> and Thunder and St. Leo sounds like an 80s buddy cop movie starring Danny Glover and Richard Dreyfuss. <laughs> Remember when I was talking about this with my wife? Remember when naming a kid Apple seemed like nuts? <laughs> Apologies to the Paltros, really. The same boat will not be in the Olympics this summer. Uh, Japan, by the way, is still only 5% vaccinated. They're about six months behind us, but the Olympics are coming, and there's nothing that can, they can do about it. You know, a lot has changed since we approved the vaccine here. A year ago, I was at home. You guys were at home. We're ordering food and leaving it on the porch until the germs died or whatever. And to remind us of how far we've come. Every week, we've been looking back at the way things were one year ago, and we've done it again in tonight's edition of This Week in COVID History. This Week in COVID History. It's the end of June 2020, and a triumphant Trump traipses back from Tulsa. He didn't just wow the crowd, he killed. Here in the United States, death toll is now approaching 125,000. The death toll, the worst of any country. Right now, the next couple of weeks are going to be critical in our ability to address those surgings. OK, Mr. Surging General, forget critical numbers. What about what really matters? TV rating numbers. This just came out, and people have to see this. Trump rally gives Fox News the largest Saturday night audience in its history. Lie. 
guys from New York. It's Saturday night. But why is America so cuckoo for COVID? The reason we have more cases than other countries is because our testing is so much. Any other possible cause? When you do testing, you're going to find more cases. We get that, but surely there's a more nuance. You reason. do more tests, it shows more and more cases. If we didn't test, we wouldn't have cases. When you do more testing, you find more cases. When you have all those tests, you have more cases. When you do more tests, you're going to have more cases. When you do testing, you're going to find more cases. Quick, this calls for a distraction. Lay a fat one on us, Fibaracci. It's the biggest risk we have. The mail-in ballot. Mail-in ballots are a disaster. There is tremendous evidence of fraud whenever you have mail-in ballots. Mail-in ballots? Who would ever do such a terrible thing? His campaign releasing this video of him signing his ballot, which the state of Florida calls vote by mail. Talk about mail privilege. I wonder what New York's easy lover governor thinks. I think this is a setup. I think they're going to lose the election. I think they're going to claim fraud. And I just hope they don't do that. Hope in one hand, in employee's bottom in the other. This has been This Week in COVID History. There you go. I told you. I don't know about Does it feel? I know, I'm listen, I, don't make, get me wrong, I'm very happy to have you guys here, but it feels super weird to have a bunch of people in masks staring at me. <laughs> I feel like, like I'm in an experiment gone wrong or something like that, doesn't it? It does, Jimmy, yeah. Yes, it really does, but I'm um, happy you're here. Thank you for coming. We got a good show for tonight. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't. <laughs>